Hey, what is up, you guys? Welcome back to Otaku. We are back for another Mangaku special where we do the Jump Tezuka contest entries. We go through, we read them, and we pick out our favorites out of the three, sometimes four, that we decide to read. This week, we're doing three of them, one for each of us. And for those of you guys that are new here and don't know what the Jump Tezuka Manga Contest is, it is a special contest that is open worldwide, put on by the Weekly Shonen Jump people and the people over at Tezuka, where you can submit a manga and it'll be read by a panel of esteemed judges and they will be picking one to win and get serialized into Weekly Shonen Jump as well as like a fat cash prize. So some of the authors that are going to be reading it is the Dragon Ball Z author, One Piece author, Blue Exorcist author, My Hero Academia, Slam Dunk, and then some of the people over at Tezuka Productions. Those will be the main people behind it. So with that, just so you guys know, we're doing things a little bit differently this time. We're going to try and uh, cut the fat off of this. We've all read the three ahead of time, every single one of us, and we'll still present them to you, but it'll be in a bit more of a brief summary, and then we'll go over what we liked, what we didn't like, and then it's same thing at the very end. We'll get to discuss which one we think is the best. With that, I'm going to go ahead and go first. The one that I picked this week was Orashi Wars by Oken002. So Orashi Wars, all right? It's kind of like an old man's tale because it opens up with a couple of people on a fishing boat kind of talking about an old an old story where a town's completely on fire. And I don't know if this actually works, by the way, so don't take this as a life lesson. They're talking about how there's a town completely on fire. Nobody can stop it. All they can do is just pray and hope that'll eventually stop. Then some mysterious guy shows up, okay, says, guys, it can't burn ash. So let's just throw more shit into the fire because the fire won't be able to get past the ash. So they basically make like a line of shit. So it burns into ash and it stops the fire. That's the setup here. Moral. Well, well, I just don't feel like that works. You yeah. Know? I don't know either, but it, moral, yeah, it's interesting. Moral of the story of this that they talk about is that anything is possible with commitment and then they finish <laughs> it with, but not everyone is ready to give up the smallest things to achieve the impossible. So that's, that's the setup. Okay. That's like the first couple of pages. So then we meet our actual two, I would say, main characters. One is named Taka, and he's really the main character. And then man number two, who he's talking to, his name is Mr. Shark. And he's not a shark. He's just a regular guy. And Mr. Shark <laughs> says that he knows he's in a o Oshini, which is kind of like a race of people or like a faction. I know like a you have EU and then you have, you know, the United States people. So Not a race of shark people, though. Yes, to be not a race of shark people. <laughs> yes, thank yes. you. So Taka gets mad that he knows that he's an Oshini. So he gets ready to fight Mr. Shark. And then Mr. Shark pulls out like his fucking gym badge and is like, yeah, yeah I'm a gym leader. Where really he's an ex-admiral of the Oshini army. So he's like, oh, shit, sorry. So they go back <laughs> inside and they talk about basically like, hey, what were you doing out at sea? Yada, yada. And they go straight into a flashback. We find out that Taka was a navigator for a fleet that was sent out to explore shit. And for some reason, Taka is not happy that the Oshini people they have a new leader and doesn't like him for some reason we don't really know Which, why doesn't like him. oh yeah you, you wouldn't say he really wouldn't want to like talk about it no he does not want to talk about it you're correct ha -ha. so then we I didn't meet... need to be that extra but okay <laughs> so then we meet two t uh, like two more characters that are pretty key there's saku who is a girl and she's the ship's cartographer and then we meet ishiros who's the captain of the ship but he's also kind of just like there he's kind of like the uh i don't know He's there to protect everybody. He's he's the big guy. Bodyguard. The bodyguard. So, yeah. So there's some conversation happening. Ishiros and Saku seem kind of close because Saku wants to give Ishiros a, a coin that they really make a big emphasis on of it being a central coin, which, by the way, is a total death flag. You give somebody a coin and she's like, hey, be sure oh. to spin this when we get to land. And it's like, oh, OK. It's like, yeah, that she's dead. OK. She it, when she says that it's not valuable where they're at now, but it's way valuable later on. Yeah. Well, I think when right? she says it's not valuable when they're at now, it's because they're at fucking sea. It's oh, that like, well, that yeah. Ain't nothing oh. valuable at sea. It's like sorry. Well, when you put it that way, that makes more sense. <laughs> it's, <just> like, <laughs> yeah. it's like yes, thank you, Saku. Thank you. So he takes it, and then they they yell out "land ho," and Taku, who is the navigator of the ship, once again says, "Don't go to land. It's too dangerous." And they're like, "Nah." Fuck you, navigator. We're going to do what we want. So they go to land and they smash right into the fucking thing. Okay? Like, smash right into it and it cuts the black. And you kind of see, like, everyone, like, oh, what happened? Do we like have something? Titanic? Yeah, yeah. And everybody starts blaming the navigator. 
Even though Taku said not to go over there, they're like, oh, I thought we had a navigator. It's like, oh, what the fuck? It's because they didn't oh. have Nami. Yeah, I don't know. So this part kind of confused me here, okay? So Ishiros goes down to t check on Saku, who is our cartographer. Mm -hmm. And they see Taku, like, through the cracks of the ship. And then he immediately puts together that it's Taku's fault. Like, he's like, he thinks Taku set it up. Like, just in that split second. Just like, he goes after Taku. And so he confronts Taku, and Taku immediately, immediately admits to it being his fault. It's like, he's like, Taku, what did you do? Yeah, I didn't really like you guys. I told you I was going to do it. I gave you a chance. Sorry. And then so they go to get ready to fight. <laughs> and by the way, the action sequences here are a little confusing. Like, when they're at sea, I, I had a hard time following it. But it leads up to the second ship, because they're a fleet of ships. Shows up out of nowhere, crashes into the other boat. Crashes into the other boat. And at that point, we see uh, Taku and Ishiros. They're fighting. And Ishiros throws a spear at Taku. And Taku tries to do the Matrix dodge backwards. Gets clipped in the fucking eye. <laughs> falls off the ship. And that's how he ended up where he is today. All right. That's pretty much all of it. Because then it goes on a little further here. And Mr. Shark, by the way, who seems like a very decent guy. I seems forgot like a about guy. him, you yes. know? He, you know he's not a real shark, right? Yes, he's, he's not, not a real shark, okay? He's not even <laughs> a half-breed, half-shark. So Taku is trying to convince Mr. Shark to come join him on this quest to uh, end the circle of hate of the Oshini culture, race, whatever it is. And Mr. Shark is like, nah. It's like, I don't want to do that. It's like, I've already been there, done that. Not going to do it. And so Taku... Like, Mr. Shark gets a little philosophical about it. They have an argument. And Taku just doesn't grasp any of the shit he's saying. He's just like, well, I'm going to leave then later. What am I supposed to do with all of these knowledges? Yeah, so he, yep, does, yep. He, he doesn't get any of it. He's like, all right, I'm out. You know, hopefully we meet again. So he immediately walks out the door, okay? Like, I'm not even joking. He walks out the door. We see that Ishiros is, like, in this town. I, that, I don't know. That can see the house for some reason. Wasn't very clear how he's this just got happened. hawk eyes. Yeah, it's like he's walking through a market, and then all of a sudden you see him spot the building, and it's like, okay, so is this house like just on the outskirts of a market? How does this happen? World uh, will never know. So Taku walks out the door, and then you see Ishiros immediately throw another fucking spear <laughs> right at Taku, <laughs> just like, bam, just throw another spear and hits him right in the chest. Like, looks like it's in his heart. All right, looks like he's yeah. fucking done for. Gets like. Blasted all the way back to the building, and Mr. Shark comes around. I was like, "What the fuck? Like, who did that? You know, messed up is perfectly Didn't good." Did you building. listen to anything I said? <laughs> yes. Like, what's wrong yep, with yep, you? Yep. And so he even talk is like, "Wow, this is kind of awkward." <laughs> it's like I walked out the door and got hit by a spear. <laughs> and so he basically, I don't know if Taku's dying or is gonna die. I don't even know if Taku's the main character because the very end bit, he uses like his last words to tell Mr. Shark that there is an Okini, which I don't know what that is. It is a shark person, I'm assuming. <laughs> so there's an Okini, Holy. which they are both human, by the way, not shark people. Oh, there's a, an Okini who had escaped, and if they find him, he could be their only hope. That's the end. And then you see a little boy and a little girl, and they're, like, prancing through a forest. And that's it. So I don't know if, like, Taku is not going to be a part of the manga anymore and he's just dead and like that was kind of the setup and really our two main characters are the little kids and Mr. Shark. Sure. At what Mr. point did he start singing Country Road? Um, never. Take <laughs> never. me okay. home. Because yeah. did, I, I, think... I feel like if he had started saying it before he opened the door to yeah. go outside to get harpooned, yeah, it would have kind of justified it. That would have been on the same complex of, hey, using this coin will probably get you killed. <laughs> they did have that cool little like couple panels where he flipped the coin and then you know, yeah. Ye so yeeted that spear. This one was really weird to me because there were some scenes like where he's flipping the coin, like you're saying, Jose, where it looked mm. really good. It was really well drawn, and when he throws the spear, the action is really good. Really, really yeah, yeah. I was like, wow. Other parts, I'm just, I get confused. Like specifically the yeah. boat scene and the stuff that was happening at the ocean, like after they I, crashed, I, I was think confused. There was just too much trying to go on at the same time. You know, trying to create that wave. Yeah, and it's like it, crashing it, it and almost everything. looked like at one point something came up from underneath the sea. I don't know what was going on there. And then it, it seemed like there were maybe another ship trying to help Taku, or I, 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 I got lost on that part. I, I feel like the whole point of it was to kind of give you that feeling like you're at sea. Everything's kind of wish-washy. You know, everything's going around. And, you know, yeah. it's just you don't know. You know. That's what I got, at least. And, I mean, so, like, Makes sense. 
<laughs> there, there's some stuff in the story that is like, okay, yeah, it seems like it could be interesting. Like, there's clearly like, I don't know, they got a new leader. They're exploring the uh, the ocean. That could be fun. They got gym but badges. It just doesn't go anywhere. So, and I don't know what an Okini is or why we need to find yeah. an Okini. Yeah, that that none of it was mentioned. So it's like, you know. And you don't see what that would actually do for them. In... No, no. And it's like, yeah. this one specifically said one shot on it, like for the chapter. So I thought, uh, like, oh, okay. So gonna that's going to be it. going to be a good one. Like, here's your teaser. And then it just kind of left me going like, okay, question mark. I, le- legit, just looking at the title of it, I was like, oh, it's going to do some avatarish kind of thing. Because that's kind of what, like, and it's just probably just because I watched it recently. Couldn't tell you, brother. So... All right, well, that's kind of all I had to say wow. on Arashi Wars. So that was my pick. Um, Jose, did you want to go next? You did the Fall of Gods with a Z? I did the Fall of Gods, man. I literally got cut on myself Gods. from that edge. <laughs> Just edgy, right? Yeah. And that's right. by Regalia, Regalia? Regalia Comics? Uh, Regalia. Regalia, yeah. yeah. We're going down with the ship together, so it's fine. <laughs> we're all going Just down, make boys. Sure that we animate it very weirdly yes. so that it's yes. all confusing while we're dying. <laughs> all right, y'all ready? This one has a lot of world building right at the beginning of it, so I'll just kind of make it short and simple. Um. Well, in the first couple of panels, you're just kind of being narrated or so, like yes. this bit where uh, there was, I-, I guess, like a superhuman society or something like that. Um. But... Uh, you know, it was all about justice and peace, and then um, it gives us the best quote ever, where it's like, "You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain." Dude, the moment I what? read that, I was like, "Of fucking course, dude!" <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. I was like <laughs> "Okay," and I think that's what, like, the second chat box of the whole yeah, manga. Second chat it's box. Like, all yep. right, I guess that's where that's the tone. There we go. Oh, these jokers. That, yeah, like, yeah. The, the, the edginess. It's just, yeah. Bane, you say. <laughs> Uh, but it goes to this thing. It, it cuts to an eye, but I'm not sure if it's like an eye in the sky. It doesn't really explain. But what happens is that all the heroes kind of turn against each other and just go on this huge bloodlust. It's a huge fight. Uh, they're all gruesomely killed, according to uh, what the manga says. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then um, it just kind of talks to you about how a year after the war happens, there's um, not peace, but they're being ruled and governed by... A dictator named Nova at this point, and so uh, really checks out. Yeah, and he was yeah, one of it, the few surviving heroes of yeah, that he, time. Yeah, yeah the, he, the time where we had a bloody fucking battle to the yeah. death. We want to keep that kind of leadership, you know. Fight. Yeah, you know, someone's <laughs> got to take charge. Yeah, sure. Uh, but then the story begins, like I uh, like a year later. Uh, he gives out an order, kind of like Order sixty six. If you're a Star Wars fan, <laughs> you know, he and does. He, he, does. he does. Yeah, I don't he, have a hood. I can't do the Palpatine. <laughs> What does he say to Cody? Initiate uh, Order 66. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, except but any- it's to kill all of the humans. So. Yeah, I have to kill all the humans because they want to recreate the world and uh, reimagine it in their um, in their image as like only heroes shall rule and mm-hmm. the the weak are nothing. Uh, so the story then continues. Uh, you just see a bunch of explosions. You see cool sunglasses muscle dude just defy tanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you meet a couple other, uh, I guess, ex heroes now, is what they would be. I think they're uh, still called heroes, uh, but it's like the definition of a hero is a good guy, but, but I, they're to them referred it's a bad to guy. as heroes all the way through. So yeah, yeah, they are. Um, but you start introducing them. Like some of them are cool. Like there's G Force, you know, Master of Gravity, uh, the oh, Illusion. Was, yeah. She's a shapeshifter. They all have cool names. All Alpha. Have cool names. Yeah. They yeah, do. they all have really cool names, and they're just literally destroying the city. And then you get to, like, the big three, where it's, like, Eclipse, the Black Mage, or Nova, the Immortal God, or Omega, the Blazing Pyrotechnic. Uh, my favorite okay. was uh, Illusion, and her nickname was Sadistic Shapeshifter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Illusion. I, uh, like that I, I, I forgot uh, Thorax, the Mighty Beast. That's yeah. the muscle, <laughs> muscle uh, glasses dude. And then Nagi. Yep, the ultimate weapon. Which is a classic title. That's that. You, you know, I, I just hear the Genji scream yeah. in the back of my head. <laughs> uh, but then it, uh, like, finally the story starts, like, you know, some thug ruffians, you know, they're just taking over the little shit towns. And then there's this kid who has a really cool looking dagger. It kind of looks like it's got the Eye of Ra on it. Mm. Or Horus, not sure. One of those two. Um, but his name is Seth. 
Yeah, and, so can oh. we pause for a second? How lame of a name. I'm sorry if the author's <laughs> name is actually Seth. But <laughs> it's like they were talking. Like, let's go back again. Nagi, Thorax, G-Force, well, Illusion. Maybe that's, maybe that's the thing. Like, and then we have creating... Seth. Yeah. I think... <laughs> I wonder if that's Egyptian in nature, though, because I, I feel like there's, like, Sethic and stuff like that. There's, I wonder like if the, it's, like, an abbreviation of some other word. I don't know. I, I feel you. Seth is, it's more of a stoner kind of guy name. And, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, all we can think about is Mr. Sogan. I mean, Rogan. Reth Sogan? Uh, R. Sogan, yeah. <laughs> Reth Sogan. Uh, but, yeah, he's, uh, he's going to get attacked by these thugs, and he just literally just fucks them up yeah it just slashes them and like as, as he's doing this though like in the background there's like this cool demonic looking thing that shows up in it i think it's super cool um but it's like is that what they're seeing um and that you're just basically introduced to the main character named seth uh then the time skips again to about eight years or so to this dude just like watching the warehouse and he's on the top of the warehouse and then you just see death you just see like it literally says death there's like a demon holding a book that says death okay. and it's like is right that not the, the death note jose it looked just like that the death looks note. like the death note i didn't even realize that it's a fucking giant demon standing behind this poor guy who's on roof duty and he's yeah. holding a death <laughs> note he, this guy gets fucked up like yeah, i mean does. seth at this point looks badass he looks like a ninja like he looks like a like, bully <laughs> <laughs> He looks like uh, Genos fused with the ninja. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what I felt too. Yeah, and he just fucks up this guy to the point where, like, he's like, "You're gonna tell me what I want to know." Uh, just beats the living hell out of him, and then breaks his knees to get what he wants. Like, okay, I'm glad he... that part was in there, Jose, because I too, like, wrote that down. I was like, he breaks his fucking kneecaps. Yeah, I don't and see he... why he wouldn't. It just makes sense. We okay. cut off Spellcaster's hands. You break I this dude's kneecaps. He breaks Oof. both of his kneecaps and then he breaks his leg after. Yep. That. It's like just if... ensuring that it works. You know. <laughs> it's like, what if... what... He's a bully, dude. You're it's in like, the world of you... superheroes. What if this guy has regrow my kneecap? Dude, he like, does superpowers. all of that and he just wants to know what's in the warehouse. Like, dog, you got exactly. eyes. You... Go look <laughs> yourself. He literally okay. just wants to know, and then he's like, "Who's your boss?" Kind of stuff. He's like, "Where are the kids?" But this guy really reminds Where's me of. Trigger? Damn it! <laughs> I see where he got this from. <laughs> uh, but oh my god, I made the comparison just right now. He's like Jason Todd. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's a Red really Hood. That. Anti-hero. Um, yeah. He literally beats the shit out of this guy, and then proceeds to just fuck him up and say, "Time to deliver judgment," mm-hmm. and then comes crashing in on. I, I, like the henchmen, the gangsters, or whatever they are, who are holding all these little kids captive. Does he uh, break all of their knees, or just the bad guys, <laughs> or is it just the kids? No, it it proceeds to a lot of sick ass action scenes where they're like, or he's just fucking everybody up, just left and right, knocking people down. He's just killing them, calling them scums, pieces, just, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, and he's not it, broken a single kid's knee. So mm-hmm, the kid, the kids are safe at the moment. You know, honestly, if if you're this far apart in, you know, in, in the reading of it, you know, I would almost expect him to say, I, I don't kill people. I don't use guns <laughs> that kills yeah. people. Um, That's why know. he uses a knife. He yeah. kills people. This guy 100% yeah. kills people. Yeah, so, he, does, he... so do other heroes that say they don't kill people, you know? Yeah, but at least I... with, like, Batman, they... You... Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. No, 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 Batman, they, I wouldn't They don't ever show somebody that. getting fucking cut in half, you know? It's like, that yeah, is you true, don't know. Yeah. The, just the car uh, that he flew over with. He just doesn't bad. have to save them. Um, um, our guy, Seth, up. who is a possible school shooter, he just uh, rips everybody <laughs> apart. So That's a descriptive term, possible school yeah, shooter. He, he, le- he legit just lot. <laughs> he takes everyone out except for the one dude. And the, the guy's like, oh, what are you going to do? Are you going to end me? All that kind of stuff. And then he's just like, no. He's like, I'm going to let you live and... I need you to tell your boss, give your boss a message. And he's like, what? He's like, you're next. I See, I have a gripe with people that do that. Um, Cause I feel like I'm always going to be the guy that's left. And now I have to convey <laughs> that message. And it's like, Hey boss, don't shoot the messenger. Cause he literally broke everyone else's fucking kneecaps and killed them. But it's Just, smart. You know, he like, like, he like follows him. 
and then he goes and talks to the boss. And he's like, who did this? Blah, blah, blah. And he's, you know, being a big bad boss. And then from the shadows, just like the Dark Knight, he co- he comes in and just starts, you know, he just beats the fuck out of this guy. Yeah. So here I have a problem with this. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the henchman goes back to his boss. Okay. Like we kind of talked about. And yeah, I, I did leave that part he, out. He goes to talk to his boss, delivers the message. And his boss goes, you know, I don't give second chances and is about yep. to kill the guy. It's like, if he knows that he doesn't give second chances, why go back? I'd be like, all right, later. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll deliver your message, uh, Seth. Send me I'm just gonna and a leave. lot of fucking things for me, man. <laughs> well, just like, I didn't think about it. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you know, he's just going back. He's doing his job. And oh, then they mention with the guy who's on roof duty, he's like trying so hard to, like, to not tell Seth what's going on yeah, in the warehouse. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm never going to tell you. So he gets both his kneecaps fucking broken and his and leg he broken. He's and probably finally, dead he's at like, this point. Finally, he's like, it's kids. They're, they're trying to get kids. It's like, dog, I could have solved that in an instant, man. Yeah, just peek yeah. through a window. But still, yeah, he did it the most badass the way Don't ever. Questions. Just break his, both his legs right off the bat yeah. and then ask, where is the hey, man. I mean, where when, are the children? When you're an anti-hero, you make, you make examples out of people. Yeah. I mean, he I, killed I that agree. guy. He yeah. killed him in a brutal way. Yep. Um, but yeah, he proceeds to fuck up the boss. Uh, I believe his name was Slough. Mr. Lou is what uh, I Mr. Lou. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Mr. Lou. Lou. But uh, he does mention, he's like, hey, man, don't kill me. If He's like, I work for, uh, I can't pronounce it. The Harai? The Harai? Yeah. And uh, which is Nova and all the other guys. Um, and then it proceeds to the last pan like couple pages where he uh they come in and investigate and they're like oh someone's already killed all these mofos he's like what do you think happened and they're talking to nova and he's like a potential threat that needs to be eliminated and he does the over the shoulder look yeah, end scene end scene so hot so, Edgy. so hot. i i don't know maybe I, I i i didn't think they came to investigate i think they just knew because, but you just think they knew? Yeah, because that, I, he, uh, Mr. Lou, when he was dying, he said something along the lines like, if you kill me, they'll know. Uh, and trackers. Then, and then the moment he got killed, one of the guys, it wasn't Nova, one of the other guys was like, oh, Mr. Lou died. And then it's like, okay, so I guess yeah, it was no. It was, an, it was another cool-looking yeah. dude with shades and yeah. horns. So, and then the Harai is the group of the bad villains, like you said. And then they also mentioned that when the superheroes took over the world, which they did, by the way, of the world leaders of the human people tried to call them to, like, a truce to, like, have a meeting. And then they just blew up the whole city. Yeah. So then everybody else just fell in line. They're like, okay. It's like, we're done there. It works. And so they took over, and then they just let the gangs of each city just take over all the cities. Yeah, like, they, yeah, they gave no fucks. Like, they, take whatever you just... want. Uh, as long as you pay us tribute, we're good. So, Jose, you said some Chad dude looking with the horns and the glasses. I, I, I've i been, you know, I, I left it at the last page. I, I'm looking at him, and all I'm seeing is, like, Chad Illidan from World of Warcraft. <laughs> and it, it's bugging <laughs> me, and I kind of look down, and I also don't know, does this creature have boobs? Which I the face see does, exactly it, what you're talking about now. I, if you hadn't pointed that out, it I may have been noticed. my biggest gripe. Okay, well, so when they first introduced Nova, by the way, he's like at his like Espada table. Um, yeah, he, he's definitely like an eyes looking thing. Were like, those wings, at the edge Jose, or was that his cape that was really giant? Ah, uh, like me look it's real like quick. he's sitting down at the main Eisen chair, okay, and he like got a either a big ass cape that he just puts I think up in it's here, a big ass or cape. He's got, it's like he's got like fucking demon wings, like Sasuke demon wings. No, I. They definitely look like a, like a cape. So this one, by the way, for me, um, what I thought of it is the art oh. was amazing. Art was fantastic. It's fucking it great. It was really, yep. really good. Um, and here's my biggest gripe with it. I found the Nova action, has a bun. I agree. <laughs> I found the action to be once again super confusing to follow. I feel okay, like okay. I it's I a, do agree with that. If I feel like it was too much stuffed in at once yeah i feel like it's gonna be a running gripe with a lot of the ones that we read yeah because it's very hard to get action done like correctly yeah um, but this one in particular was super confusing because I, I think it's like an art like especially like with one punch man you can get like weight and like dynamic like all this stuff from reading it whereas i i think that's like a, a master class that like, you kind of yeah. need to take yeah there's some stuff in Definitely. this once yeah. again 
that was done really well. Like when he was hopping down to attack the roof guy, that was a really cool mm-hmm. sequence. But then there's other you, parts where like he gets held at gunpoint at one point Seth does. And I have no fucking idea how he broke out of that. I could not describe to you how he <laughs> broke out of that. It just, would you, he's a ninja. Yeah. It's just a cluster of shit happens and then he's free. So now, would that be your only gripe though? As far as like, cause I um, feel that's so here's my thing. When reading this, the original, the very first story where they're talking about like this hero setup and how a group of heroes decided they needed to rule the world. I was like, that is interesting. That is cool. Mm-hmm. I like that. That's kind of like injustice. You yeah. know, like, yeah, that's, it is. That's cool. And then as it kept going on further, I was like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I like, I liked it a lot at the start. Then uh, I meet Seth. Cool guy. He takes on the gangsters. Cool. And then it jumps to eight years forward for no reason. But then it's like, I, I don't know. After that, um, I don't know. He's being a vigilante. I think that's pretty much yeah. the, the story. He's going around being a vigilante, and that's it. But, uh, like, from the... Th- I think you know, at the end, it does say this is the story of how he... Um, what he came to take he, down, like, gods or something. Is what yeah, he, he, ta- he takes down gods. Yeah. I, you know, and I, we haven't read or we talked about mine yet, but of the three, I would say this has, like, the most cohesive like thought like you know like there's a thing going on whereas like with yours it was kind of like okay what and mine I, I feel the same way i feel like there's some cool shit that they're doing here and in the, the terms of like art direction and like and like that kind of like fighting thing i wonder if that's something they could talk about if they were to win like or if they got signed on could they bring in more developed animation in that sense i don't know yeah you know it, it they will get better, but my biggest one hundred percent gripe with this manga no, is you. the action was so hard to follow. That's true, yeah. and the art was fantastic, but it's like the action was yeah. really hard. So yeah. um, I was really impressed with it. Like I, I thought, it, this, if, every once in a while we'll get the one where it feels like, did somebody actually produce this? Like, is this just mm-hmm. a submission to this contest? But it's a real fucking thing, kind of thing. I don't know. Yeah, it looked good. So let's go to yeah. yours, Josh. Kapu uh, cool. Boredom by. Say right? Well, yeah, yeah. They they've got a lot of extra vowels in both the name of the uh, <laughs> yeah. thing and their their title. So right. you kind of start off in like this strange wasteland uh, with this little girl. She doesn't seem very little, but she's younger. Um, she's running away from something. You kind of within the first few pages, you see that she's running away from like a like a masked dude or like an unfaced or like a faceless dude. Um, they're kind of hiding behind a bunch of stuff. Okay, and... I got immediately uh, when I've read these first few ones, I immediately got like some sort of sexual assault. Like, dude, shit. I thought dude. it was gonna be like a weird crime yes. thing. I was like, oh and wow. I thought it was gonna be like this little girl. This is what she's imagining in her mind is happening as she's getting yeah. sexually assaulted by her dad. Yeah. Or... That, oh my god. Wow. Thank like you. that's okay. immediately what I got. Like when they're running through, I'm like, this is gonna be some fucked up psychological shit. Yeah, and you know, like, yeah, it just because everything's barren around you, there's like weird pikes in the floor, but you don't know what the pikes are. Like, it's just they look like balloons. Wasteland. And she well, says, it, "Does she say the start? Like, she doesn't know where she is or why, but she knows she needs exactly. to run away from that guy." So I'm like, oh, "Okay." Yeah, exactly. yeah, she says that. So it, yeah, it felt like an internalization of like trauma yeah, or something. Yes. So mm-hmm. and so Jose just said they 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 look like balloons. So the balloons weren't there initially. She kind of keeps running, and then all of a sudden, it's like a forest of yes. balloons. Um, and at this point it's like kind of terrifying. There's nothing like all you see are balloons and she knows this guy's following her. She hears like a pop of the balloon. He's kind of like toying with her and she's like panicking. She's like, Oh my God, he knew I'm, you know, listening for him. Like he's found me and just out of nowhere, he's got her and you're like, Oh fuck. Like this is bad. And again, the entire time, like from the get go, Sam was right. That's exactly how I felt. It yeah. felt very like this is going to get very sexual harassment-y. Yep. It's going to be a very uncomfortable subject to like look at. It's going to be like a weird, like perverse version of what actually happened. And that is about where shit starts getting fucking weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, randomly, yeah, yeah. he's now like he hears something and he's now attacked. He's now impaled in the arm by these pikes that you've kind of seen throughout, but you don't see them in the balloon section. She then takes this opportunity to escape, but you've noticed that the whites of her eyes are now black. 
and you're like, is she going demon, demon form? form? Yeah, they're either yep. black or like filled with blood. It could be either or. Yeah. I wasn't sure which was which. I mean, her eyes are yeah. bleeding in one of the panels, so I mean, she might just do Amaterasu. <laughs> one of the other things that kind of like kept the so we're at this point where like shit's starting to get a little topsy turvy, but it's not like it, you're supposed to be like twist. Yeah. And there was like a flash of a dead girl's face yes. at some point, and I just didn't know what I was trying to look at it. There were some images where I just like there was a thing between the wasteland and into the uh, balloon section. I don't know what she's doing. It's just a blob of hair with feet in one direction, but her hands here, and it looked weird to me, and I, I couldn't well, zoom they, in. They do a really cool part with that with the balloons, where yeah, they're like they they make it look like her hair. And then they use that where the get the dad yeah. thinks that he has her at one point, but it's just a balloon. And yeah, it's like, oh yeah. shit, okay. And it's like I didn't even put it together. It's like, hey, the balloons look like her I hair until he tries to grab it and it's the balloon. It's like, oh, I can see that. See, I was just thinking it was like, oh, uh, the balloons weren't so important and it was just a quick background, but no, that's cool. I like that. I didn't think about it that way. So yeah, all of a sudden, her eyes are black. She's escaped. He's on the ground. He's calling her a bitch as a sexual well, assault would. You know, yeah. exactly. And all of a sudden, she starts doing, like, a ritual, and she's pulling shit out of this guy's head. And it's all these zombie girls. And I'm like, oh, this is totally, like, this is an ex-rapist murderer currently trying to... Not He's not an ex. He's, he's actively trying to do all this stuff. And she's yep. one of the victims. And she can somehow channel all the people that he's murdered. And they even at one point, let me just get the line correct. We are more than 30 victims. We want our identities to be known. We want him to pay. And I'm like, yeah, we've nailed it on the head. This is a manga about sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And then they're just like, hey, that was a cool idea you had. Fuck you. And they're all of a sudden in a lab talking about how she's a specimen for some weird fucking very vaguely described organization. Experiment. And yeah, organization and experiment called Caput Mortem, which we looked up and it means either dead head or worthless remains in Latin, which I wanted to wait. I wanted to see if they would give me their definition or what they're interpreting until after the book or after the, the pages. But we looked it up. No, they don't give you shit. <laughs> um also, you kind of realize that this girl is not, like, a teenager in height. She is borderline, like, the way they portray her in the first yes. 15 pages. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. looks like, an, a, a, like a young adult. Yes. In, they come to this immediate part in the scientific lab where she's a, either a midget or oh, she is a child. They call her a child. They call her, like, yeah, a literal child. Yeah, and yeah. she looks so much like a child her... that she's like a doll, almost. Yep. Yeah. And but they kind of keep her. They they have it in the background. It's like a little far shot. But they keep more of her facial features. And then there's like these random expositions that come out of nowhere. They're saying like, after this, the part that you're talking about, it's almost all exposition. Yeah, and yeah. I read it twice, and I I took notes. I've got the notes right here, and I'm like, I still don't understand what the fuck is going on right now. They they've. They're using her to explore this place. She's the best experiment they have. She's a clone. A clone of what? Is she a clone of all the things that died? All those 30 victims? And, like, then you get to the final page. And, you know, they've got some symbolism symbolism where these, like, weird skulls that are The final page confused me. I, I and, honestly didn't get that part either. So, yeah, I was expecting this was the thing to tell us. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what she's doing. And I will quote it right now. So that there can never be a threat on how they perceive reality and normalcy. Who the fuck is they? <laughs> okay. They, so They is you. So I have this written down in my notes for when I read this. Is right after they get through the portal, shit goes off the rails. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I don't know <laughs> what happened. I, it's like, it's almost like, like, spoiler alert for Cabin in the Woods. Okay. Oh. It's kind of like you know what's happening. It's a standard horror movie. Uh, there was an anime that aired last season. I think it's called ID Invaded, where they go into like criminals' minds and they like pull out these memories to like figure out if they That's did a crime super or something. Cool. And I thought this was very similar to that. Upon reading, it. I was like, okay, I see. That been They're cool. doing like the mind diving thing. This is like some trauma, like we originally thinking. Uh, because and she then... plays as a victim. Yes. You know, but and she, you fully fucking believe she's a victim because yes. it's an internal monologue. 
And then her eyes change color, and all of a sudden she's like, "This was planned. You fell into my trap." Yeah, and then like, she opens a portal, the- and then they're in the lab, and then it's just all over the fucking place. Yeah, it's just when they started giving you the information is where I got completely lost, and I was like, "Huh, this could have been something a lot more simpler, and still gotten a really good point across." Yeah, so yeah, and I- it's it's like there's these doctors where it's almost like I don't know. I my best comparison is like evangelion where it's like they have these little kids okay. and they're trying to sort out and they talk oh, yeah. about in particular i have written here is that no subjects go as deep and as far as her in the dead's kingdom i, I don't know write- and then yeah, they I mention that, that her yeah. affinity with necromancy is super powerful and she's evolving constantly okay this is all info and dump she's young, right so it's only gonna get better and they mention I- already that because she's evolving in that field okay i have it down here again they have complete control over life and death of every human being. Huh. Like, but why does that matter? What is, yeah. what, what, what is this? So then who are they? I, so part of me, as uncomfortable as it would have been, I mean, it's a discussion. Mm-hmm. I, like, this is definitely like something where we, me and Sam were at least like, this is going to get sexual harassment. If it had ended with like, this was a child's interpretation, <laughs> it would have hit. That shit would have hurt hard, and it would have been <laughs> fucking like, fuck that. Like that is just one more thing for me to keep in the back of my mind as I'm about to fall asleep. This is what a child's going through mentally when all this shit's happening. Now I am losing sleep on what the fuck. <laughs> yeah. And I, yours, both of yours. I feel like I, I can't remember specifically. I feel like there was a two chapter for one of yours. I, I feel like it was Jose's. Ours no, ours was been, all all no, one chapter. It's all one, but yeah. it's way there longer. There was like a weird break so in like, one of them. Caput Mortem is nineteen pages, I yeah, think, and the rest mm-hmm. of yours were fifty four. Ours and was like fifty, and some of the fifty of ours were double, like double length, like wide. Yeah, like they were yeah. fat. So ours had way more to go off of than that. But Caput Mortem left me with so many questions. And they just went. They, here it maybe is. that's what they wanted. Like the just last questions. half, they just throw so much shit at you. And another thing they mention at the very end also is they bring in something called the Salem's Guild. Did you see that they said that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Is that, is, so are they witches? I, did. Yeah. I swear to God. They, they say that like they're gonna maintain the strength of whatever, like Josh mentioned, and then they mention in a, just a sentence, "We will, with the Salem's Guild, keep humanity safe and maintain order." Who? What? That, where? That, what? So, we have that means witches, witches are involved have, now. Exactly. We have witches. We have necromancy. We have potential like matrix shit. I so I don't. It sounds like we hate it. <laughs> I don't the dark arts. I'm just. I, I am just. No more question like, mark. Why would you put, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I agree. Put this out. Like if this, we we've talked about this. Um, I don't know if it was on the record or not. This is your one shot to portray what you're doing if you have to adjust what you've created to get the story across like this isn't this isn't it this is your pilot episode i have no idea what the fuck you're on about and you've lore dumped me in the last four pages i don't want to continue like i want to know but again and i think we did this in a previous video i'll just read the fucking wikipedia like when this is <laughs> yeah. I'll re- read the Wikipedia. What the fuck is the foundation? See, I, what the fuck is... I'm going to hot take here. I do not agree with that. Oh, really? I feel like this one, for me, out of the three that we read, which we're, we'll, we'll start talking about which we like the best, yeah. is the most unique and interesting one by far. Like, I, by I, far. I agree. It's, it has such an interesting premise to it. I thought it was going to be like a, like a detective almost thing where and, she like... Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you seen those commercials for Inspect or whatever it's called? That Crunchyroll series? Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. I think that. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. That's kind of that. what. It, yeah. So, but it's like to me, I wish it was double the length, and yeah. we got some more because I I get so basically what I felt like is they give you the uh kind of like the hook at the start. You're like, okay, what's going on here? She's being chased by we got the sparks predator. notes of it. What's it happening? And then they yeah. pull you out, and it's like, actually, that's not it. This is what's really happening. But yeah. then they tell you what's really happening without telling you what's really happening. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. we're going to do this together with the Salem's Guild. She's our ultimate weapon. And at one point, they show, like, they, they have more of her. And there's another guy that they put together, like, Frankenstein or something. Yeah. And they just, like, show you all this cool shit. Whereas I would like that to still happen. But then let's go a little further 
and let's see like her walking around the base. Let's meet some yeah. characters. Like let's get it's an overworld shot. Or a something. little bit like, more of like uh, we're gonna. Reason. We don't know if this world is separate from what they're yeah. in. She looks different physically in the world that she's currently being represented in versus the one where the sciences have her. At. I don't it. That whole her being short thing could honestly just be we've got her since birth. This is her back in the day. Now she's an adult kind of thing or like she's growing up. There's no there's no description. And I feel like if they were going to do the pull out method where they pull you out of this realm of whatever she just fucking did and she wakes up, it it should have been like the Matrix where she's unplugged or whatever the fuck they're planning on doing. And she's the one to tell you. Hey, I stayed in there longer, but they she she doesn't know. She doesn't know what she's doing. She has no idea what's going on. But at some point, she knows like she's seen these people. Because at the beginning, she's like, I just don't I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm doing. But you see her with the scientists later on, and I want to know: Is her mind get wiped when she's in these realms? What the fuck? Which is a possibility like, I, because she gets Bucky yeah, Barnes. I yeah, have not she's a weapon. seen this anime. But I had to do a couple of, uh, like, reviews on it. Uh, I think it's ID Invaded. I'm pretty sure that's the one. It's either ID Invaded or Inspector, the one that Jose mentioned. One of the two. But uh, that same premise where they go into people's minds, he, I, the detective loses his memories when he goes in there, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And then he's got to kind of, like, piece it together and figure it out. So that does that's happen. Cool. And that's what I thought this one was going to be once we got past the it's not a sexual assault thing. And but then would I you agree know. with me, Sam? Would you agree if they had kept it concise that the sec- But I, I also this has to continue. Yeah, you know, for it to go and shonen jump. Well, this or so, jump to Zuka, I apologize. But it's like this one. So you think of let, let me give an example. Uh, Samurai Eight. Okay, when we read that, that is Always a well known, well known mm-hmm. author, like a uh, Naruto author. Yeah, his first chapter was fifty pages or something like that. Like it was long. Just yeah. like a lot of these, because you need for the first chapter, it needs to be really long. Like you, well, I was you saying, need to have enough time pilot. to give people your thing. Which this I thought was a great start. I really thought it was good. And I was like, okay, they're dropping all these key these buzzwords like fucking Salem's Guild, she's our weapon, uh, we have control over life and death, she's good at necromancy. I'm like, okay, but okay. I feel like okay. that was just a bunch of hooks to kind of get you stuck here, but I, I don't know what any of this is doing, and it, it just felt too much all at once there was no build up it was just she is uh, list 15 different things and i look i'm not saying i don't want to know more i just i agree with you it needs to be longer and to your point the 50 chapter thing that's a pilot episode you you don't your first episode of anything like in terms of tv is normally an hour because you need more time to set the realm that you're and they didn't set the realm. I don't. I still don't know what's going on. It's not like I didn't like it. Just I don't know. Yeah, it seems like they got to the part where you would be like, "Yeah, we're gonna protect this world together," and then it would zoom out, and you would see the world's fucked up or something. And then you would that like, would cool. yeah, like like a post apocalyptic yeah, world. Yeah, you would see like, like Earth like split in two or some shit. You'd be like, "Oh fuck, okay." Yeah, but the heavy line that they tried to end the whole thing on like left you with little. Like I don't. I, more of a, I guess my wanting first more, is, I guess. Yeah. yeah, and I'm I'm fine with wanting more. I I feel that's that's the intention. You you shouldn't yeah. feel like this is done. But let me see if I can get this. Yeah, the first. last page for me where it really fell flat. I don't know what was going on in that last page. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. like they showed like a crest here and then like a crest here, but this box was mostly empty. And I was like, I don't, I, I don't the know. One, it, I don't know if it was a crest though. It's her feet with like a squibble snake it's like a necromancy <laughs> yeah snake but yeah I, again i it's i'm saying i'm i'm acting like i didn't like it. i just i don't know how to have an opinion because yeah. i just feel like you're right they hooked us at the beginning you and i had like a strong sense of what it could be and it kind of like for me horror or like mind fucks are from knowing what's about to happen and knowing it's inevitable and seeing like the train wreck happen and I, they, they had the potential train wreck in the sexual harassment realm, and then it just turned topsy turvy. And yeah, it could still have that theme where they're doing that, but maybe, or that was that special guy's issue. He was a sexual assaulter. I don't know. 
Okay, well, so, let's get to the part where we pick our winner for this episode. We've done three. It was pretty quick and concise all the way around. We did spend quite a long time on the last one because lots of sorry. questions to be had. So yeah. that's totally understandable. Do you guys have one off the top of your head that you would pick over the other ones? Yes. Go for it. Uh, Fall of Gods. Okay, yeah. Fall of Gods with yeah. a Z. Josh, Fall of Gods with a Z. Yeah, um, I just I would pick was put cool. Mortem, fight me. So. Oh. I knew you would. After our discussion here, I was like, fuck, Sam's picking Kaput, and I was wondering what Jose was going to pick. I just like the art style. I, I, I just I like to know. It's very shonen, so I guess I went somewhere yeah. more close to like home kind of thing for me. And the hero thing's cool. I And, you know, the end of the end of Kaput Mortem, I had so many questions. Now, my only question for, you know, Fall of Gods is, is that dude a chick? Is that Chad Illidan? <laughs> what? <laughs> Biggest question. Looking, I still have the fucking photo of the Eisen table. I'm. I want to say it's, it's a, a cape. cape. It's a cape, right? But it's, it's gotta so be. It's so obnaccious. Yeah. Like, that's, why that's is how, it that big? That's how you He's know you're the main guy. Maybe it's like Dragon Ball Z. The longer your hair, the more power. Oh, but for capes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know. Or he's like Piccolo and the heavy suit kind of situation he's gonna whip that thing off it'll cleave the fucking world in half because it's a couple thousand bajillion tons we don't know <laughs> man these deep questions for the fall of gods well congratulations to the fall of gods for being our winner for this episode by regalia comics congratulations mm-hmm. uh you are the winner you'll be on the end screen with the rest of our winners and uh you know when we pick the winner winner just know that we are expert name the judges in the future exactly so. <laughs> And I, I would also like yeah. to say we've noticed since we started this that a few of the ones we've already reviewed have that gotten second chapters uh, added. If Kaput Mortem has a second chapter by the time we get finished with this series, I am totally okay reviewing that and changing my mind. Ooh, my boy, just... a, a Tofu Dragon. Yeah. Yeah, my boy, a Tofu Dragon's got multiple chapters. Yeah, we should we should revisit that. That was super dope. All right. Well, thanks for watching this episode of our special Jump to Zuka Mangaku. In case you guys like the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We're going to do them every week. So three weeks out of the four for every month, we'll be doing the Jump Tezuka stuff. And then on the fourth one, we have the regular Mangaku, which is our monthly manga book club, where we read the three volumes of a published series. So this month, we are doing Witches Printing Office, which looks pretty good. Um, I yeah. think it's pretty popular already, but it's not published by like Shonen Jump, which means it's uh, less popular than all those other ones that are like gangbusters. So we're going to be doing those three volumes. So check us back then or stay tuned for next week. We'll be back with more Jump Tezuka stuff. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next episode.